Happy Thursday, everybody. Today is August the 25th, and this is your two-minute thought with your boy, John Redman. Y'all, today's topic is tired of church. Is anybody else out there tired of church as usual? I mean, what's the point? For real, for real. Like, what's the point these days? Why do we do it? Put on our best dress and our best suits. Drive in our nice new cars. Get to church. Say hi to all the saints. Plop up in our favorite pew. Say amen at all the right spots. Stand up when we're supposed to stand up. Kneel when we're supposed to kneel. Watch the praise team do their thing. We shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Minister, get up and preach. We say amen. They pass the offering plate. We give our offering and our tithe. Hear the benediction and go home. Why? What's the point? Nothing's happening. We just go through the motions. There's no change. Check went to church. What's missing? I'm tired of church as usual. Does it seem like a waste of time? Why do we do what we do? Why do we even go to church today? Well, let's go on and answer some of those questions. Let's shine the light. <laughs> the Bible says in Luke chapter 4, 16, well, Jesus went to church and he went to church every Sabbath. Prove it. Luke 4, 16 says, So Jesus came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. Okay, okay, so Jesus went to church every Sabbath, and he stood up to read or to teach. Yeah, but, but what else? Like, that's nice, but what's the point? Like, they call the pulpit now the stage. They call the congregation the audience. They pass out the playbills or the programs and, and the offering plate or the donation plate comes around. Like it's set up for a big show. What is going on? What's the point? Why do we do what we do? Why do we gather? Why do we go to church? What's the point? Hmm. Well, you know what? Now, it's true. We are called to gather. It's important that we gather, but I think I see where we've gone wrong. Because we do gather, but we don't gather in his name. Look what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 18 verses 19 and 20 it says and again I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything they ask it shall be done for them of my father which is in heaven verse 20 for where two or three are gathered together in my name there am I in the midst of them. Oh, so you're saying we need to be gathering together in your name, aha moment. We've been gathering, but we've been gathering for the wrong reasons. It hasn't been in your name, Jesus. See, when we gather, we gather together to show off our new clothes. Our wedding ring, we just got engaged. Touch bases with our favorite church friends. Show off our talents. Display our kids on the stage and their talents. Uh, we pretend to be happy in our marriages and we want to make sure we wow the people with our brand new cars and our intellect, our degrees, our big words. Oh yes, we gather. But we fail to gather together in his name. 
See, we aren't coming together to touch and agree with his promises, which they are all yes and amen. Brother John, what are you talking about? Oh, let's see. <laughs> we are gathering together, but for the wrong reason. See, can you see how we in the church are attracting the world, but we are actually repelling those who are in need of deliverance? Oh, you got money, you got power, prestige, you got fortune and fame. Welcome into our building. We'll put you in the favorite pew. Oh, wait, who are you? You've got problems, you're sick. You've got diseases, you're hurting, you're poor, you're homeless. You smell. <laughs> Here are the exit doors. And they get escorted right on out. We repel those who are in desperate need of Jesus. The missing link in our churches is Jesus. Check out Matthew. Verse, um, chapter 21, verses 12 through 17. See, I did, <laughs> I did a, uh, a post about a month ago and it said, um, move, get out the way, get out the way, because a lot of us are in the way of people finding Jesus. We are gathered together, but for the wrong reasons. Therefore, we're in the way of others getting their deliverance and, and, and in the way of people finding Jesus a direct path to Jesus. Look at Matthew 21, 12 through 17. And the Bible says, and Jesus entered into the temple and drove out all who sold and bought in the temple. And he overturned tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold pigeons. He said to them, it is written, my house shall be called a house of, prayer, touching and agreeing, but you've made it a den of robbers. Jesus had to get those folk out of the church because they were in the way. But when he cleansed or cleared out the temple, look who came, verse 14, and then look what happened. And the blind, and the lame came in the temple and he healed them. Oh, well, Brother John, well, that was back in the day. That's when Jesus time, when Jesus was walking this earth. Oh, but you missed it. You missed it in Matthew chapter 18 because the Bible says, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Where you and me come together in his name, Jesus is there too. And where Jesus is, there's healing, there's deliverance, there's chains broken, the, 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 the captive are set free. And whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Where Jesus is, there is liberty. But it takes two or more gathered in his name. Why do you go to church? If it's for any other reason than to gather in his name so he can be present, so the blind can see and, and the deaf can he, the, hear and the mute can speak. And those who are sick and sin sick, they can find healing and deliverance and wholeness in that church where you are. If it's for any other reason, there's no point in gathering other than gathering in the name of Jesus. Yep. I'm tired of church as usual. It's time to go back 
to that old early church. It's time to go back to that old landmark.